go ahead and find your way to stand. We don't often start in a standing position. But my intention for this practice is to check off my exercise in addition to checking off on my to-do list the dasha shala, meaning the joint lubrication and warming. But given this season and my schedule personally today, I have a little bit of a crunch on my available time. So I want to make the most of this time without increasing risk of injury or danger. So one way to do that is to start standing so that I'm engaging the whole body from the beginning. Now, if you are feeling perhaps a little more lethargic or a little more fatigued, go ahead and do this from a seated position and adapt whether you're on the floor or in a chair. Let's begin with some breath. Soft and soften even more with each exhale. I'm recording this practice on December 1st, the beginning of the perhaps the busiest season of the year, at least here in North America in the United States. With the holidays upon us already into Hanukkah for those of you who celebrate Hanukkah. But also the holiday of Christmas and the preparation for the new year has already begun seemingly as early <laughs> as September, right? Not even waiting until the Thanksgiving holiday to begin the buzz. So maybe like me, your schedule is getting a little fuller, a little tighter, especially as the days get shorter, we move towards the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. This is where a little yoga can suffice. A little yoga is better than no yoga. And we meet ourselves with compassion, even if all we can do is take a few breaths mindfully to ground into this moment, into our body. And that is enough often to sustain us through the most trying of times and trying of schedules. Your breath has helped you to ground and settle. Begin to move a little sway. Perhaps you widen the feet, scroll the shoulders. You might even feel a hip lift up and back and down. This is what I call my backup dancer move, right? A little snap. And I feel like I'm right in that backup, ooh, ah, backup singer move, right? But I'm also gonna exaggerate that a little bit. The backup dancer who just has so much prana, so much energy and vitality in life, they can't help but really get in to their role. Right, so warming up the shoulders, getting a little warm up through the legs and the spine. Now we're gonna take that right into empty coat sleeve. So again, the feet will lift, the back foot lifts as the arms sway. Let the centrifugal force, the movement of the arms, welcome a little rotation into the spine. We pick up that back heel as a way to protect that back knee. The knee is not designed for rotation, right? It's a flexion and extension. In other words, a bending in neutral is its home. Ah. Well done. All right, so hands to hips. You know that I'm a little teapot song, right? So feet can stay wide. It's a little easier to warm up this section of the body with the feet wider. We're just gonna bow. So notice that my hips are staying level, so I'm opening up the side body and rise back up. Now, you might not find this particularly challenging. That's okay, right? But if you do find either expression, the bow or the lift as a bit more challenging, Great opportunity to coordinate with breath. Exhale, I like to exhale on the rise. Exhale, inhale, and exhale. So my hands 
don't have to stay here on my hips. If that causes any shoulder discomfort, right? A lot of us have shoulder issues or the shoulder blades hike up a little bit or there's an excess of internal rotation just due to our desk work, our driving, our front body focus work. You can drop the hands out or you can extend to a little more rotation. Let that hand reach up and over. Even if the arm doesn't want to extend as far as mine does, that's okay. A little more sensation as I bring my feet under my shoulders. Okay, a little narrower even than my hips. That's going to bring even more stretch down the outside of my hip. And for me, it actually travels to the back side of my sacrum as well. But I'm kind of a tight ass. <laughs> so any stretch, any movement makes me aware of where there's congestion and a little bit of a tonic state, particularly in my left side. All right, stay right here, or you can add a bit more. So I'm gonna cross one leg, standing on one, bow in. Again, step, cross, wobble, correct, and begin again. Ah. One more time to each side. Standing into that standing leg might make that stretch feel even more yummy. Good. As you stand, go ahead and step the feet a little wider, maybe even turn the toes out. That's to help with that orientation of the thigh bone. Support the hands above the knees on the thighs. And then cat, rounding the back, tuck the chin. And then cow, release the tail to lift as you roll up. Through the chin, maybe even through resting that jaw. Good, back and forth. So just like the other two spinal movements, the rotation, the twist, and the lateral side bend, we started gently and then moved towards a little bit more core strengthening, a little more challenging, a little more heat going. So cat and cow here, or maybe you're all the way down on your hands and knees. If you're on the floor, you might even recline to do more of a bridge lift. It's not exactly the same, but it's still gonna get that flexion and extension of the spine, right? If you're looking for a little more, the stirrup up. Now I'm gonna turn sideways, right? You're gonna poke the bum out, then scoop and let the spine ripple up. Don't worry about what this looks like. I mean, it feels almost not, not even just almost, it feels like it's a little bit naughty, right? A little bit erotic, a little bit awkward and uncomfortable. Just playing with these edges to build our capacity. All right, we're going to take this a little bit deeper, even still. So chin, and then drop the head, drop the shoulders, use your hands for extra support. Continue to round through the mid back, round through the low back. Let the head fall, perhaps even letting the belly rest on the thighs. Reach the hands under and through and take a breath. Generous bend in the knees. My scarf is strangling me. Good. Reverse, scroll it up, squeeze through the thighs, lift through the belly, exaggerate the rounding, use your hand to that additional support on your thighs. Head is the last to rise. Again, two more times, chin, collapse the shoulders, collapse the sternum, fold at the belly, Round to the low back. No hinging at the hips until the head is as low as it can go. Oh, take a full breath. And 
and slow it up. And you just get a little more parallel, a little more challenge for the back body. So hinging at the hips, bend at the knees, bow forward, making basically a flat back extending to the crown of the head, and then lift right back up. Hinge and bend, bum goes back, knees bend, head goes forward, and lift and rise. Good. In three. Four. And five. Good. Hold it here. Maybe add a little extra by extending the arms, sinking the hips a little back, check in on the toes. Are they gripping? Can you soften? Five, four, three, two, one. Rise. Use your hands for extra support. Use your core strength. Take it up and extend into a gentle back bend. Bring the hands down and hold them behind you. Squeeze the elbows, squeeze the shoulder blades, and circle the head. Good. Pause. Give yourself a hug. Open wide. Give yourself a hug. And open wide. Circle the head in the opposite direction. Turn the thumbs down. Just consider how that feels in the shoulders and the shoulder blades. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands behind the head, press out. <sighs> Fold in, turn the palms up. Cat the back, press it out. Thumbs lead, lift up to that back bend. Fold it forward, hinge. Bend, bow, swing the arms behind you. Good, inhale, rise all the way up. Put hands down and press out. Good, fold in, press forward. Good, thumbs lead, lift up. Bow and fold, let the arms trail behind, maybe even up. Good. One more time. Come up to sun breath. Come down, press out. Fold in and press forward. Moving those elbows, wrists, and fingers as you build heat through the body. And relax. Roll it up. Palms flip. Let's make a little figure eight here. Exaggerate the wrist. Exaggerate the movement of the fingers. Take it all the way down to one leg. Standing on one, use the wall for additional support. Roll over and around the ankles and the toes. Take a look. And see if your foot is moving in the way that your brain thinks it is. Where are you perhaps missing this exploratory circling in contact? Reverse and go the other way. And notice again, where are you touching? Where are you not touching? Where is perhaps this movement simply not available to you today? Step back into that lunge. Arms up and down. <sighs> Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Right, we're going to shift the weight forward. Toes on the back leg. Now lift this leg. Exhale to lift and lower. Option to add the opposite arm. Lift, lower to horizontal. Lift and release. One more time. 
and then bring that knee forward. Maybe you stand on a block. Maybe you can hold it all the way into your belly. Maybe you can balance on one leg. Well done. Go ahead and release. Shape or roll out the hips. Take your time. Moving to the second side. I like to imagine I'm hula hooping. Do a little hula hoop. Try to move while you hula hoop. <laughs> right? Oh, that was fun. Roll the other way. I don't get out much, right? So sometimes playing hula hoop for my imagination is, is extra fun for me. <laughs> Go ahead and support. Stand behind with the second leg. Soft in the standing leg, square in the pelvis, tall in the spine, steady in the breath. Then the build this lubricating motion in the foot and the ankle, which is gonna echo all the way up to the standing hip, which is gonna challenge your core, right? So all of this is already a bit working while we warm the joints of the ankle and the foot. Reverse. All right, step that foot back. And again, same thing, lift and lower. Or you can come all the way into a bigger sweep if that feels safe for you. Last one. Good, shift the weight forward. Prepare. So opposite arm and leg can lift and lower. Right. I think I did the same arm and leg on the other side. Did I do the same? Either one, it's a little bit of a different chain on the connected tissue, but it's all beautiful, it's all good. Last one. Those are a little fatigue in the gluteus, right? Draw that leg forward, whether it's standing on a block, chair, holding it with your hands, whatever's available to you. All right, set that foot back down, maybe a little wider than your hips. I like to turn my toes out, that helps navigate this thigh bone hip connection. Big sun breath, and then bow. Hinge the hips, bend the knees, sink as low as your body will allow. Inhale and repeat, lift up. Exhale, come down. How do you feel it? Where was their work? As you come down, you might sit on the block, you might sit in the chair, you might sit all the way to the floor and bring your feet in front of you. You're going to take a twist. So one hand in front, the other hand might leave the leverage of the knee, might extend up and out, or turning the thumb towards the back and then internal. Thumb goes in and then points back, you might wrap it around through the back body. If that's available, you could come into a fuller bind. Front arm, thumb turns down, folds over the knee in front of the shin, Right? And maybe, just maybe, there's a connection with your clothing or with that hand that's wrapped around. And then swivel the chin up and down. Look towards the bottom arm. Look towards the top shoulder. If you are still on your feet, follow along as you unwind, hands plant and hips lift, okay? If you are already on your bum, right, that's fine too. You can just extend out here, right? Whatever's available, just gonna bend and straighten the knees. A little more work to do that in the standing fold. Gravity is gonna help pull or stretch through the hamstrings. If your hands don't reach the floor, 
Use blocks, use your hands on your thigh. Just taking a couple more of these pulsations. Then we'll pause in that sit once again. Malasana, squat, and take the other side rotation. Hand in front of the leg, second hand on the thigh. Use that for leverage to rotate the spine. Or extend with a little more effort, a little more squeezing of those back body intercostals, the rotation muscles of the torso. Or enjoy a bit of a rotation with traction. Bind the hands. <sighs> Good job. As you unwind, catch yourself from behind. If you're still on your feet, remove any obstacles so that your bum can come down to the floor and the hands can support behind you. I like my fingers towards my hips, but they can point out. They can even point a little bit towards the back. We're just going to engage the buttocks, press into the feet, lift the hips up into a reverse table, and hold it for five, for four, for three. Knees wrenching, heels pulling towards the buttocks, and release. Control the descent. Wrap the arms around the thighs, the shins, tuck the chin arcing through the back, rounding through the heart. Woo. Good, one more time, reverse table, hands plant, feet plant, lift the heart, press into the feet, lift the bum, even if it's just a little bit, right? Here's good, this is beautiful, right? Where do you feel yourself engaged from the buttocks? the feet. Yeah, there's going to be some stretch in the chest for sure. Release. The bum down, the hands adjusted for comfort, sway the knees. Stay with the knees swaying or add that twist, the mermaid flow all the way around. Back to your center, all the way around. Looking for a little more effort? Pause in the middle to plant and lift. Remember, a little yoga is better than no yoga. Breath is better than no breath. So find what works for you, even to the extent that just visualizing these shapes might make a world of difference for how your body, mind, and spirit experiences, not just the practice, but more importantly, life and all that it offers. So as you come back through center, again, feel free to take that final reverse table lift or set up with a nice tall spine. So for me, that means I'm gonna pull the flesh of my bum behind the bony part, the ischial tuberosity or the sits bones. Just the width of distance between your groin, your pubic bone and your feet for stability and comfort. And then as if you are that, kind of playful, topsy-turvy tea cup. Just roll. Let yourself rock from right to left, from front to back. Feel what your body says, experiences, has comment on, and reverse. And then undulate the spine, cat to cow. Nicely done. When the heart rate has steadied a bit, you'll be ready to lower to the floor. 
As you lower the spine, use your hands, use that touch down of the elbow and then settle the shoulders. Maybe you want a little bit of a pillow under your head if that feels stressful here. Otherwise, let yourself be as flat as your body can tolerate. And then with that upper body supported, start to sway the knees once again. What do you notice now that we've changed our orientation from the upright to the recline? Or maybe you're even noticing the difference from when we were standing. Go ahead and box the elbows and let them sway in the opposite direction of the knees. And feel free to add the head. It could go with the elbows or it could go with the knees. Well done. That feels complete. Go ahead and stack the feet. The left foot is going to tuck the toes towards the right buttocks. If this causes any strong sensation, go ahead and prop that outer thigh on a shoe that's handy or a block or a pillow. Then with a strap, if you need a little more length, draw the right knee towards the body. You could even plant that right shin, right calf on a chair or on a block, the foot on a block, right? Anything to just Again, we're changing the orientation of the two sides of the pelvic unit, the hips. Oh. Let gravity do the work here. You don't have to engage the arms to hold. That's why the strap can be helpful if the leg doesn't come in far enough to let gravity pull it towards the belly. Adopt and accommodate your experience, your body, your energy, Now, check in here, because for some of you, lifting that bottom leg might be more of the next right step than setting down the top knee first. So use your hand. Yeah, it's going to require some inner thigh muscles to stand that foot and then set the top foot down. Or set the top foot down and then lift the leg, whichever feels safest. Once you've extended into that pause, sometimes re-engaging feels a little more threatening. Now, to build the second side, the right foot is going to cross towards the left sits bone, the left butt cheek, and then fall open. This could adjust, right? Your thigh, your hip, your shape is going to make a difference on where that leg can land. Then when you're ready, draw in the left knee towards the torso, kind of towards the shoulder joint. For some, that might be more towards the outside of the shoulder, particularly if you're feeling strong compression, dense compression here at the front of the hip. That's generally where the thigh bone has met its counterpart, the hip bone, in which case just dropping it outside can release that place of compression. Well done. Again, I'm going to take you to the opposite dis dismount, right? So the top leg works its way down. Then using my hand, stand the second leg. Try one, try the other, see which one works best for you. Now, if you've made it this far, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. But please take at least 10 breaths in Savasana before returning to your day, right? Savasana is that integration pose where our body can release the effort of all of the work and prepare for the work that is to come. Without this pause, without this integration time, 
the work actually just wears us out. It doesn't help us strengthen or build our, our endurance or our tenacity. It just fatigues us. It just burns us out. So give yourself the savasana. The ease, the heaviness, the support, the warmth, the stillness, the quiet, all of the above or whatever it is that you can receive here. 10 slow, steady breaths, or stay with me until you can close together. Linger here as long as your schedule allows. As long as your mind and your mind stuff can receive the ease of rest. And this too is a practice, a practice of learning how to be still, how to be quiet, how to be introspective. When you are ready to release, use your breath to help guide movement back into your body. Start small and invite those bigger shifts only when the breath feels like fuel to your effort once again. Rolling over to one side, traditionally roll to the left side. This helps to keep us in that easeful state of the parasympathetic nervous system. Then using the top hand to press yourself up, coming back upright to a comfortable sit. And for me, that is this hero's pose. For you, it might be crisscross applesauce, or as we call it in yoga, sukhasana. Could be the legs out, dandasana, or staff pose. Just coming to, once again, kind of the middle of the middle between our savasana and our return to the day, return to the work that's ahead. Pause, breathe, and feel. Having honored yourself in this practice with even just a few moments of breath and mindfulness, can you feel how there is just a little bit more readiness for what's next? And if you don't feel that readiness, then come back to your savasana and give yourself some extra compassion if time allows. And if time does not allow, how can you move into what's next knowing that perhaps you're not at your fullest capacity today. And that's okay. You take the time to breathe, to move, and to rest. Ask for more time if that's what we need. Ask for compassion from those around us if we're feeling frazzled. This is the practice of self-care and learning 
to advocate for what we need so that we can stay safe, we can stay well. May you breathe deeply and move freely, labor lovingly, and live vibrantly. May you be well. Thanks so much for joining me. Namaste.